All right, so we want to look at the temporal region. Um, the temporal region, uh, let's see what this is like. So the temporal region is the region of the head, right? This is a skull of the cranium. So the temporal region is the region of the skull or the head that includes the lateral area of the skull and um, deeper soft tissues that overlies the temporal fossa superior to the zygomatic arch. So what we're saying is that the temporal region is this region that is superior to the zygomatic arch and um, the soft tissues, the deep soft tissues that are found in the temporal fossa as well as the, the area that overlies the skull that is found in the lateral area aspect of the, of the skull and the head. Now, uh, let us see what this looks like in this diagram here. We're going to talk about this, this diagram in a short while, but let us first of all see what this plays out to be. Alright, so this is a skull. We try to um, draw the skull, that's the maxilla, that's the nasal bone, and um, here is the orbit. Okay, and of course we have the temporal lines, and um, that is your mastery process, and of course the stylet process. And um, we have the incisor tooth and all of that, and then the molar. And inferiorly, we have the same thing. And um, that's it. That's the lower jaw. And um, what you have here is the condylar process of the mandible and the coronary process of the mandible. And that's what we have. It looks a little bit oblong, but it kind of represents what we're trying to show. So here we have the, I'm going to use a different marker to show that. We have the um, zygomatic bone. That's the zygomatic bone. And uh, that's the zygomatic bone. Okay. So what we're saying here is that the temporal region is this region is the temporal region it is superior to the zygomatic arch all right it's superior to the zygomatic arch now it has boundaries so let's look at the boundaries of the temporal region the temporal region is bounded it has a superior boundary which is of course going to be our temporal lines so these are our temporal lines. We have a superior and inferior temporal lines. Okay? And then it has an inferior boundary, which is definitely going to be the superior margin of your zygomatic arch. So a superior margin of the zygomatic arch. So this is the inferior boundary. Right? And of course it has an anterior boundary. So this is the anterior boundary. So the anterior boundary would be your frontal bone as well as the maxillary process of the zygomatic uh, bone. And then it has a posterior boundary, which of course is a continuation of the um, inferior temporal and superior temporal lines. So we would say a superior and, pos superior and posterior boundary are uh, formed by the temporal lines. Now it has a floor. Now remember that we have this suture here, okay, and then you have the meetings of about four bones at this region here. So you have this coming this way and that way. So this gives you somewhat of a H-shaped structure and um, 
that Ceterion, which we have there, so this is Ceterion, right? The floor of the temporal region is formed by these four bones here, which is the frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone, and of course the sphenoidal bone. That's the floor. And how about the roof? So the roof is formed by the temporalis fascia. Now the main occupant of this, this region or the fossa that is formed here, which is the temporal fossa, is the temporalis muscle. The temporalis muscle is occupying this region. Now it's important to note this, right? Because the next structure we'll be looking at now is whatever is formed inferior to the zygomatic arch, which will be this region here. All right, so we want to talk a little bit on the infratemporal fossa. So this is the supratemporal fossa, or well, the temporal fossa, and this is the infratemporal fossa. There are a lot of reasons, reasons why we want to talk about the infratemporal fossa, because it has a lot of complex structures in that area of anatomical interest, clinical importance, and it is important when you um, do your um, ear, nose, and throat rot rotation, you have a full understanding of the anatomy of that region. Now, the infratemporal fossa, the infratemporal fossa, I'm going to use my skull again, so that's my skull. So, the infratemporal fossa is an irregularly shaped fossa or space that is deep, that is very deep and inferior to the zygomatic arch all right so this is the infratemporal fossa right i have my hand right my index finger my left index finger in the infratemporal fossa just inferior to the zygomatic arch right good so in definition the infratemporal fossa is an irregularly shaped um, space that is deep, so it is very deep and inferior to the zygomatic arch, and it is deep to the ramus of the ma mandible. It is deep to the ramus of the mandible, all right, and it is um, it, it has boundaries that we're going to talk about now, and structures that are found within this space, all right. Now, like any other thing else. In anatomy, we usually talk about boundaries. Boundaries usually would have superior, inferior, lateral walls, medial walls, and of course, there would be um, the roof. So the roof usually is, is usually superior, the superior um, boundary. So this here is my medial pterygoid muscle. So this is my ter medial pterygoid muscle. So I'm going to be attaching, because look at this, we're looking at this bone, the skull, from the posterior aspect now. You see the lateral and medial pterygoid plate as part of the spinoid bone, all right? The spinoidal bone. Now, this lateral pterygoid plate is attached to it is the lateral pterygoid muscle. Here we have the medial pterygoid muscle. So the medial pterygoid muscle is attached to the medial pterygoid plate and runs inferior posteriorly to be attached to the inside aspect of the angle of the mandible. So that gives us that gives us this space. Look at the space here. Can you see the space? That is a space. What we're talking about here is the infratemporal fossa. It is deep to the mandible, right? It is deep to the mandible. And then, look at that. So this is the medial pterygoid muscle, and that is the attachment of the medial pterygoid muscle to the inside. So the medial aspect of the um, angle of the mandible. Now let us look at the boundaries. The boundaries of the infratemporal fossa, the boundaries of the in infratemporal fossa, it has a lateral boundary. So we start with a lateral boundary. We use that with an L. It has a lateral boundary. We need to see that, where the lateral boundary is. So the lateral boundary is the ramus of the mandible. That's the lateral boundary. 
okay so it's the ramos of the mandible mandible the ramos of the mandible so we have identified we have identified the lateral boundary okay that's the lateral boundary now it has a posterior boundary so this is the posterior boundary the posterior boundary now we come to this diagram here because remember we said we're going to talk about this diagram now this is the same thing i have represented here this is the mastoid process of the temporal bone and this is stylal process this is the tympanic plates that's the tympanic plate of course you can see the the external auditory meatus, we just cut off the um, the temporal process of the zygomatic bone and also we cut off the maxillary process of the zygomatic bone. And given we just want to expose this area here, what you see in here is a lateral pterygoid plate. So we can see the lateral pterygoid plate if I expose the mandible, if I expose the mandible. Now the mandible is out, we can see the lateral pterygoid plate, which is also reflecting there. All right, that's the lateral pterygoid plate. Okay, now this portion here, where I have my index finger, as well as my middle finger, as well as my middle finger, is the infratemporal fossa. That's the inter infratemporal fossa. Because I have just taken the mandible away, the ramus of the mandible forms the lateral border, this is the posterior border. The posterior border is formed by the mastoid process, the mastoid process of the temporal bone, the stylic process, as well as the tympanic plate. That's the tympanic plate there, All right? Now it has an anterior border. The anterior border is formed by the maxilla, the posterior aspect of the maxilla, All right? It has a medial, border and the medial border is formed by the lateral pterygoid plate that's the lateral pterygoid plate it has a roof the roof is formed by the infratemporal crest which which of course is the inferior limit of the greater wing of your of the of the spinal board all right that's the roof and then the floor it has a floor or i would say in better put it it is the inferior aspect, the inferior border. The inferior border is the point where the medial pterygoid plate unites or joins with the inside surface of the angle of the mandible, which was what I showed before. So, now this is the medial pterygoid plate. It is the inside surface have that there so this is the inside surface or the interior surface of the angle of the mandible and now you have the medial pterygoid muscle and that space is what we're talking about so this is the inferior aspect the inferior border okay and I hope that gives you a better understanding of the infratemporal fossa now the content of the infratemporal fossa what are the content of the infratemporal fossa Always remember this, that we have muscle, there is, there are muscle, okay, there are nerves, and artery, and vein, of course, and then we have a ganglion, okay, now let us analyze this, let's look at that. The muscle, the muscle has three. The lateral pterygoid muscle, the medial pterygoid muscle, as well as the inferior part of the temporalis muscle. Those are the muscles that are found in the infratemporal fossa. How about nerves? The nerves are basically nerves of the mandible, the branches of the mandible, the mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve is a is, a, is, a, is one of the divisions, the sensory division of the trigeminal nerve, okay? That carries a small motor branch along with it. So these nerves 
are the branches of this nerve are the inferior alveolar nerve, the inferior alveolar nerve, the buccal nerve, the lingual nerve, and the caudal tympani nerve. The caudal tympani nerve is one of the branches of facial nerve that supplies anterior two third of the tongue, special sensation to the tongue. What about artery? Most importantly is the maxillary artery. We will talk about the maxillary artery and the branches of the maxillary artery. The maxillary artery bifurcates or one of the temp one of the one of the um, terminal branches of your external carotid artery is the maxillary artery and the superficial temporal artery. The superficial temporal artery. The maxillary artery gives 15 branches within that region, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Then the pterygoid plexus, venous plexus is the vein that you find in that region. And the ganglion is the otic ganglion. We talked about the otic ganglion earlier, where we did make mention of the um, nerve supply of the, of the parotid gland. Now, having said all of this, what is the importance of this we've talked about? Now, the infratemporal region, the parotid region, as well as the temporal region, all will give birth to a common understanding of the TMJ, the temporal mandibular joint, and the movement of the temporal mandibular joint. We know that the temporal mandibular joint is a modified kind of joint that is found in that region, and these muscles of mastication help in the movement of the temporal mandibular joint. The parotid region where you find the parotid gland, also this gland is highly movable, mobile within this joint. Now, anatomical or clinical anatomy of the temp TMJ is very, very important, which we will discuss later on in this, um, in this uh, lecture. So let's stop it here and then we'll see you next time.